thank you for the opportunity to have a presentation in this workshop. And my name is Ryo Mizuta, and uh, my, I'm going to talk about the uh, projected changes in extreme precipitation in our high resolution large ensemble. And the, uh, Excuse me. Sorry, Ryo. Um, is everybody hearing him well? I hardly hear his. Oh, not really. Can you put the not microphone really, closer yeah. to your mouth? Oh. I, I I I don't know how to make larger volume. Well, uh, there is a comment that it sounds okay to some people. All right, just just um, please. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. Continue, please. Okay. So, yes. Uh, action and the extreme precipitation is projected to increase in most part of the world uh, due to the global warming. And it is for the first approximation uh, associated with the water vapor increase in the atmosphere. Uh, saturated water vapor increases about 7% Kelvin following the Clausius relationship. Uh, but uh, climate model simulations have shown that the uh, uh, spatial pattern of uh, the extreme precipitation like here uh, is different from that of water vapor increase and uh, and the increase magnitude depends on precipitation time scales and also on the written period of precipitation. So in order to address these issues in detail, uh, especially on the written period precipitation, uh, we need models with sufficiently high resolution to capture local heavy precipitation events and sufficiently long-term simulation to detect extremes. And so here we use a high resolution large ensemble simulation. Uh, we have performed uh, a large ensemble simulation using our 60 kilometer AGCM and 20 kilometer regional climate model. Uh, it is named the D for PDF which has already introduced to the presentations in this workshop. Uh, the 60 kilometer AGCM is the lowest resolution capable of creating tropical cyclones and the highest resolution, highest possible resolution for large ensembles, the latest computer resources. Uh, in this simulation, the projected sea surface temperature uh, changes in the semic coupled climate models are prescribed as the lower boundary conditions in the AGCM. The results are dynamically downscaled into the 20 kilometer regional climate models covering uh, these regions. Both results are, are, are used. Uh, now it's used for the impact assessments and the adaptation studies. And we have four types of simulations. Uh, a historical simulation uses the, the observed SST and observed uh, greenhouse gas concentrations for 60 years and has 100 ensembles. And the warming simulation uh, assumes four degree warmer than the pre-industrial level uh, using SST warming from uh, taken from CIMIP-5 model. 
Uh, today I will show you the changes from the historical simulation to the four degree warming simulation in the global model. Uh, this slide shows the simulated extremes in the historical simulation. Uh, the upper panel is the frequency of tropical cyclones. Uh, so this is this is the observation, and this is the model for all tropical cyclones and most intense cyclones. So we obtain the uh, similar distribution uh, compared with the observation uh, and the similar but smoother uh, distribution uh, because of the large ensemble. And the, the lower panel is the frequency distribution of uh, daily precipitation uh, in the grid cell, including Tokyo, just for one example. Uh, the lower, uh, uh, the red, yeah, red line is the frequency from total 100 members. Uh, so it has a very smooth curve down to was about 0.003%. Uh, that is corresponding to a return period of 100 years. This shows uh, the global distribution of daily precipitation extremes. So this is the annual maximum daily precipitation is a return period of one year. Uh, that's a, this is the return uh, video, 10 year, 10 year return values and 100 year return values. Uh, so uh, we can find that the, the increase, uh, the rate of increase, really is larger for, for events with longer return periods here. Uh, both in the tropics and the extra tropics. This green color shows about 30% increase, and the light blue is about 50% increase. Then this is the plot of a global average of the change. So the green line is for the daily precipitation. Uh, showing a larger uh, increase in the uh, uh, return periods. And we also calculated five day precipitation in the red line and uh, six hour precipitation in the blue line. Uh, so, so that case that uh, increase is larger uh, in the shorter time scale. Uh, and, and the global mean temperature increase from the uh, historical to the warming station is about 3.6 Kelvin. So corresponding water vapor increase is about 25% uh, here. So these increases are generally larger than expected from uh, this uh, so then we try to separate the changes into some dynamic and dynamic contribution. First, uh, extreme precipitation is approximated uh, using the vertical profiles of the temperature and uh, vertical motion uh, on the modeled extreme event day. Uh, in equation. And then the, the changes are uh, decomposed into the thermodynamic contribution. Uh, temperature change and uh, uh, dynamic contribution from the vertical velocity change. Uh, the, this figure uh, is this value in the historical simulation composited over the days of near return value at each grid point. Uh, so it's 
change here uh, can be decomposed uh, to the, the rather flat thermodynamic contribution. And this dynamic contribution, and this is associated with large scale circulation change. And this figure is shows the dependence on the return period. So the thermodynamic contribution uh, does not depend on the return period. And but uh, the, this dynamic contribution associated with contribution obviously increases uh, with return periods. So, so this is the global average of uh, uh, dynamic and dynamic contributions. In any cases, the term dynamic contribution uh, almost constant. And quantitatively, this is about uh, 7% per Kelvin for uh, climatological water vapor increase. We can say that the dynamical contribution is responsible for the dependence period, the dependence on the time scale. Uh, then we looked at the uh, dynamical contribution uh, in detail. Uh, this is the vertical profiles composite and days of specific humidity, uh, vertical winds, uh, horizontal convergence, and horizontal moisture convergence. And the dashed lines are for the event with one year return periods. The upward motion is slightly enhanced in the, in the warming experiment, uh, but the bold line the event with 100 year periods, the upward motion is much, much enhanced uh, in the M2 upper troposphere. The uh, horizontal convergence uh, is consistent with the uh, vertical wind change to the Trinity equation. So, so this is enhanced in this levels. So as a result of multiples of uh, increased specific humidity margins, uh, the rate of increasing horizontal water vapor convergence is large from surface uh, up to top. So oh, oh, this is the summary of uh, uh, high resolution large ensemble climate simulation and the uh, rate of increase in precipitation is visibly larger for longer return periods. And the dynamic, uh, thermodynamic contribution generally follows uh, the Gradius curve relationship, but the uh, dynamic contribution, the vertical wind change, is responsible for the dependence on the return periods. Uh, and the, during a uh, rare, a very rare event, upward motion is enhanced in the upper atmospheres, and vapor convergence is enhanced uh, up to the middle sphere. This is not inconsistent with the previous studies using very localized. Uh, Study using regional models in which he, he rating heat release gives updraft uh, makes uh, positive feedback, uh, making a kind of super city scaling. So I think our future work is to investigate whether these mechanisms are working in the global model. Thank you very much for your attention.